Becca, you're still as useless and worthless as always. This trip was something my son and I were looking forward to. You, who have no part in this, can go home right away. My mother-in-law started nagging me the moment my husband left the table. We were on an overseas trip that my husband had asked me to plan. If she feels that strongly about it, I'll go home. What happens to the two of them after that isn't my concern. My name is Becca, and I work for a multinational corporation. Since my job has a flexible schedule, I've been working mostly remotely since I got married. This means I spend a lot of time at home. My husband, Jack, loves to present himself well and is quite the big spender. Unfortunately, he has never contributed financially to our household. I didn't see this side of him when we were dating, but after we got married and started living together, his true nature gradually emerged. His mother seems to enjoy bragging about her son. I've heard of mothers who dote on their sons. I was prepared for that to some extent and was willing to tolerate it. But she is obstinate and strong-willed. She doesn't listen to other people's opinions. She even completely ignores her husband's opinions because she believes that her son is the best. She doesn't like me at all. Every time we meet, she always has some snide remark. She seems to particularly dislike the fact that I live comfortably on my son's salary alone. She keeps nagging me, saying, You're still young. You should work outside. I've explained many times that I continue to work after marriage and that I have a job that I can do from home, but in her mind, working from home is just a part-time job. She assumes that I'm just pretending to work by always looking at my computer. She presumes that I'm probably playing games. Apparently, I'm a worthless wife who doesn't do housework properly and only plays computer games despite being a stay-at-home wife. My husband, of course, understands my work style, but he has never explained it to his mother. Even when it's said right in front of him, he turns a blind eye. Even when I asked him to explain it, he says he wants us women to handle it and completely throws it at me. He even says he doesn't want to get involved in troubles. Once, when I persistently asked him to do something similar, he threw a completed divorce paper at me. It hurt me to be treated like that, and I thought about divorcing him. However, I heard that getting a divorce is more difficult than getting married. It would be a problem if it were more difficult than the current situation, so I ended up giving in to my husband's argument. I understood that my husband prioritizes his mother in everything. It's frustrating, but I feel like I need to find a way to deal with her while skillfully deflecting her. I didn't agree to divorce because of this change in my feelings, but it seems that my husband thinks I'm head over heels for him and didn't want to break up. His pompous attitude is getting worse day by day. It's cute when a child tries to act grown up, but when an adult does it, it's rather a turnoff. I've learned to ignore his pompous words and act as if I haven't seen his actions. There's another reason why I didn't divorce him. Due to my husband's job, we live quite a distance from my in-laws. We meet once a year, or at most twice a year. I thought I could tolerate that much. While the world was making a fuss about having nine consecutive days off, if you take a vacation on weekdays, both my husband and I were working. In my case, American holidays don't matter much because I adjust my schedule according to international circumstances. As for my husband, it's just that he wasn't taking nine consecutive days off according to the calendar. When he returned home after his first day back at work, he announced, let's go on an overseas trip. When I asked him what he was talking about, he said that his colleagues had taken a vacation and made it a nine-day holiday to go on an overseas trip, and he was quite proud of it, which made him incredibly annoyed and regretful. I was dumbfounded by his childishness. But I haven't been on a trip this year, so I suggested a domestic trip. The reason being, my husband has no experience with overseas trips, so if we were to go overseas, he would have to apply for a passport. There won't be a problem if you're with me. You're fluent in multiple languages, he said. I studied abroad when I was a student and had been on many overseas trips when I was single. In addition to English, I can hold a conversation in Spanish and a bit of Chinese if necessary. When my mother back home got hooked on Korean dramas, I studied Korean with her. However, I didn't get much opportunity to use it, so I'm not very confident. 
Sure, compared to my husband, I might be good at languages, but that doesn't mean that applying for passports will be finished in a snap. I tried to persuade him to go abroad during the summer or winter, but he wouldn't listen at all. On the contrary, despite having no experience, he decided on the country to visit, took leave without permission, and told me to make it work on the schedule. It's not a tour. Why should I have to act with strangers? He declared. Furthermore, he stated that English is a universal language and that we should have no problem if it's just the two of us. I thought maybe it's fine, but before I knew it, he said, That's right, I promised to take Mom along. I'll count on you for that, too. Your mother-in-law, too? Even for me, taking care of two inexperienced people abroad is too much. You should show some filial piety once in a while. Maybe you can gain some favor by doing so. Our kind and good husband... This is for your own good, Becca. You should be grateful. He said things that made it seem like he was doing me a favor, but arguing against it started to seem foolish. I decided to quietly make reservations as my husband instructed, and I came up with another good idea. Starting from applying for my mother-in-law's and husband's passports, booking flights, and hotel reservations, it was a lot of trouble. But in order to implement my idea, I patiently fulfilled all my husband's wishes and created a perfect schedule. On the day of the overseas trip, my mother-in-law, who knows nothing of my troubles, cheerfully and childishly exclaimed, Just as I expect from my son! It's a long journey overseas. The seats are business class, aren't they? Knowing my husband, he probably said something like, I'll take you there. He probably bragged about himself, saying things like, I made the reservations and I planned the schedule. The truth is, I did everything and my husband did nothing. They did nothing and left all the procedures to me. What's more, the two of them, who have hardly any experience with airports, moved around on their own while I was doing the procedures, walked around aimlessly even when it was boarding time, and I had a hard time finding them. The airport staff even asked, would you like us to make a call announcement? It's Becca's fault for not telling us the boarding gate, they said. It was such a fuss, but they showed no remorse, saying, and this wife was planning to have fun by herself, leaving us behind. During the flight, they behaved relatively quietly, but it was honestly annoying and embarrassing every time they called a flight attendant. Several hours later, we arrived in the destination country. After finishing immigration procedures and such, just when I thought I could finally head straight to the hotel and take a break, my husband turned pale and said, I'm going to the bathroom, entrusted his luggage to me, and ran away. I don't understand why only my husband got sick when we ate the same thing. He had been grinning and calling his favorite flight attendant. I guess this is his divine punishment. Serves him right. Becca, you really are an inconsiderate daughter-in-law. How long are you planning to stay here, huh? This trip, my son planned it for me. It's a mother-son trip without the need for a daughter-in-law. You're a money grabber who doesn't even work. How brazen of you to think you can enjoy this trip for free. Go home now. Are you sure whether it's good or bad? I can't have fun when you're here. I see. That's not good. All right, then. I'll go home now. I handed my husband's luggage back to my mother-in-law only taking my carry-on, and turned my back to her. My mother-in-law, who received my husband's luggage, was stunned and had a very vacant expression on her face. It's not possible for her to react like that when she told me to go home. I was doing my best to hold back my laughter. My husband seemed to have been going in and out of the bathroom several times, so we didn't cross paths. Luckily, I was able to get a ticket back to America, so I became a passenger on the plane headed there. Originally, I had planned to find a chance to return home alone. If we had a good relationship, I wouldn't mind being taken around as a tour guide, but not with that mother and son. It's only stressful for me, and I will gain nothing. I can't stop grinning just thinking about what the two of them, who can't speak anything but English, will do when they are left behind. If they think a little, they should be able to manage with the translation function of their smartphone app. But I can't imagine my husband, who likes to show off and inflate his own importance, doing something like that.
When I safely returned back after making a few detours, I headed straight to the luxury hotel where my parents were waiting. Meeting my husband, Jack, told me to show respect for my parents, so I treated them to a luxury trip in upstate New York. They were to travel there leisurely on a popular scenic route, enjoying the scenery and meals along the way. I managed to meet up with them earlier than planned, much to their surprise. When I briefly explained the situation, they were taken aback. They were astounded that I had agreed to such a request from Jack. My phone was flooded with calls and messages from Jack, but I ignored them all. I turned off my phone and fully enjoyed my time away. After partying with my parents and getting home, I got a call from the embassy. According to their explanation, Jack had returned from the restroom to find my mother-in-law sitting alone. Despite being surprised that I was not there, he was livid. He tried to contact me but couldn't get through, so he decided to make his way to the hotel by himself. However, not knowing where to go, he was visibly flustered. When a kind person spoke to him in broken English, he was led away after being told that they knew the place and would take him there, only to be robbed of all his money, passport, and valuables. My mother-in-law was even stripped of her jewelry. When he was found standing on the street looking destitute, the police picked him up and referred him to the embassy for help. That's how he was able to contact me. The embassy official asked me to come and pick him up. He couldn't withdraw money because his wallet, which contained his bank cards, had been stolen. However, I asked back why I, a stranger, had to do that. I explained that I was already divorced from the man who was there. The truth was, I had kept the divorce papers he had thrown at me some time ago. Back then, I decided not to proceed with the divorce as I had heard it would be a lot of trouble. But this time, I had reached my limit. After filling in the divorce papers, I headed to the hotel right after landing back in the States. To my surprise, the divorce was accepted without any fuss. I already had a new place lined up, and the contract had been signed while making the travel arrangements. I didn't want to use the furniture I had shared with Jack. It made my skin crawl. In my new place, I planned to buy everything new, so I packed for both a trip and the move at the same time. All I need to bring to the new place are my work tools and my favorite clothes. I could easily have everything else sent by courier at a specified date and time. The embassy staff did not ask anything more from me, and the conversation ended. Later, it seems my former mother-in-law had pleaded with my former father-in-law, and with his help, my ex-husband Jack and ex-mother-in-law were able to return to the States. However, Jack, who had blown his top, contacted me. You left me and divorced me without my knowledge? Abandoned? No, I just obeyed your mother's instructions to leave. If you have any complaints, talk to your mom. And please consider the business class flight I arranged for you on your return as my farewell gift. I also reminded him that he was the one who had first brought up the divorce papers. I only filed the divorce papers he had prepared, fulfilling his wish for a divorce. Do you think such sophistry will work? How much more do you want to embarrass me? Embarrassed? How so? If you want to feel embarrassed, I have a better story. Want to hear it? What is it? Well, did you know you're a regular at an adult entertainment club? You're pretty invested in a favorite girl there, aren't you? Rather than contributing money to the household, you are heavily splurging on her. But you ended up in debt when her demands escalated, right? I had an investigation agency look into a debt collection letter addressed to Jack that had been delivered to our house. Although Jack was a good spender, his obsessive behavior seemed to be a turnoff. His favorite girl's true feelings were that she thought he would eventually stop coming if she kept asking for more money and expensive gifts. I wonder what Jack felt when he heard that. That's quite an embarrassing story, isn't it? If you make any more fuss or contact me again, I'll spill the beans to your company. Got it? Being disliked by the girl he was infatuated with would be an unbearable humiliation for Jack, considering his personality. If this became known, it would be a great embarrassment. Jack, who until now had been aggressive, just said, Got it, in a feeble voice and ended the call. A few days later, my ex-father-in-law contacted me. He told me he had also divorced his wife, my ex-mother-in-law. I thought it was unnecessary as we were no longer related, 
but it seems he contacted me to expose my ex-mother-in-law's true nature, as we both have been treated poorly by her. My former father-in-law, suspicious of his wife's behavior, investigated while she was out and discovered that his retirement savings had been depleted. The money was apparently spent on beauty treatments and cosmetic procedures. As I'm not familiar with such things, I was totally unaware. When asked for a woman's perspective, I was stumped because I hadn't noticed it either. I guess seeing someone only once a year makes changes more noticeable, but I truly hadn't picked up on anything. I even asked my former father-in-law, are you sure it's for beauty treatments? She seems to have sunk quite a bit into it, but there's no visible change. Perhaps there were slight changes that only my former mother-in-law could notice. It felt like throwing money down the drain. Naturally, my former mother-in-law, who was kicked out penniless, turned to her son, Jack. However, Jack, the backbone of the family, is up to his eyeballs in debt after his divorce from me. He even lost his apartment for failing to pay the rent. Now, he and his mother seem to be living in a drafty, rundown apartment. Yet his mother has no intention of working and won't quit her beauty treatments. On top of repaying his debts, the burden of his mother's beauty expenses is weighing heavily on Jack, who I hear is working around the clock. It looks like the desire to appear larger than life doesn't fade even when living standards drop. If they're happy with it, I'll keep quiet. But I've heard rumors that the beauty treatments aren't as good and she's aged a lot. As for me, I cherish the present moment when I can relax and improve my work without anyone dictating to me. It made me think again about living within my means.